Hello, welcome to the TV Nerd Knits podcast. I'm your host, Megan. You can find me on Instagram as TV Nerd Knits and Ravelry as several. You can also find the group for this podcast on Ravelry as TV Nerd Knits. And currently, um, you can only find the podcast on YouTube. If you are a returning viewer, welcome back. If you are new, thank you for checking out this podcast. Uh, the last episode, I saw quite a significant increase in viewers, so yay for that. I'm not exactly sure what happened or, you know, what the cause of that was, but that was pretty exciting. So thank you for checking it out, and hopefully some of the new viewers from the previous episode will be back for this one. Um, this is a knitting and spinning and yarn addiction podcast, so let's get on to the show. Let's start with knitting. I do have an F.O. Last time I recorded, I was trying to remember where, I even went back yesterday to see where I was on certain projects, and now I'm not exactly sure where I was on these, but I think I was already on the leg on my husband's socks. Um, he requested, after I knit this pattern for my dad for his socks for Christmas, and my husband really liked the pattern, so he requested that pattern. And he also wanted thicker socks, so um, this is the Blueberry Waffle Sock Pattern. The name of the designer escapes me, I never can remember, but it's a pretty popular pattern, and it's a free pattern on Ravelry. Um, I knitted this in worsted weight yarn. This is Malabrigo Rios, which is their 100% Superwash Merino, their worsted base. I think it's about 218 yards per skein in their sand bank colorway. The pattern is written for DK weight. Um, I think 56 stitches was the recommended stitch amount for DK. I think I ended up having 48 stitches total. I I put it down in my project notes if you are interested in that. Um, it's also written cuff down. I knit these two at a time toe up, which the pattern is the same forwards and backwards. It's not a big deal to knit them um, cuff down or to what, whichever your preference is. I also did an FLK heel, Fish Lips Kiss heel on these as well. Anyways, so they are nice and thick. They fit very, very well. My husband really likes them, which I'm glad, but he knows that he has to wait until Christmas before he can have them. <laughs> so I'm really glad to have them done. They went by very, very fast on worse than weight yarn. Um, oh, I use US 5, which is a what? Three and a half millimeter, I believe. It's US 5 needles. And anyways, two at a time to what magic loop. And anyways, so yeah, they're really nice. I love the stitch pattern and they fit very, very well. If you have not tried the Blueberry Waffle Socks pattern, I highly recommend it. Um, like I said, I knitted my father's socks for Christmas out, out of the same pattern, and then I just knitted these, and I'm most likely going to knit it again for a pair of socks for me because they just they fit so well. Because of the stitch, it's like a, it's a broken rib. And it kind of it pulls in and hugs the foot and leg a little bit more than, um, say, plain vanilla. So it does take a little more time to knit them because of all the purling, but 
it's very well worth it because of the fit. It's just a nice, comfy, snug fit, which I really, really like. Anyway, yay, they're done. That is my only FO. So let's get into the lips, shall we? Um, first things first, and I showed this last week, is the new shawl design that I'm working on. And if I can get my project bag. <laughs> and okay, apparently I really need to do a different way of closing this. Okay. Mm. It's not wanting it's a drawstring bag and it's not wanting to cooperate. Um anywho, so last time I showed this is the front yeah, this is the front. This is the new design that I'm working on. Last time I shown it, I was just to the different stripe change up in, in the striping. This is not it with two um, different colorways. The blue green is Blue Lagoon, and the pink orange is Beach Cocktails. And that's red umbrella yarns in Victoria. Worsted base, which is 100% superwash merino. I'm only 219 yards per skein. Anyways, so I finished the second striping pattern, and I am back doing the third or second, or rel really the repeat of the first striping pattern. But I'm to that point, and I think I am. I'm over 200 and something stitches. I don't remember. I don't remember what my exact stitch count is at the moment, but it's going very well. As you can tell, the rows have gotten longer, so it does take. It doesn't seem as much progress could have been done, but a lot has been done. And it's a top-down uh, triangular shawl. I had switched the needles from last time I reported. Um, I was using fixed circulars, and I don't remember what the cable length was. My hair is getting on there, sorry. <laughs> anyway, um, I don't remember what the cable length was, but I switched needles to a longer cable length. And these are new to me. And it's the first time I've tried these out, these are um, Knitter's Pride Cubics, which are square, they're square needles and they're uh, metal. I think they also have wood ones, but I don't do wood needles because, uh, no. <laughs> but they're very nice. First time I knitted with with the cubics, the squared needles, and I've heard some a lot of people say it's it's um easier on their hands, and then I've heard other people say that they're trickier; they couldn't ever get used to them. And I've also heard that your gauge changes with them. I haven't noticed a change in my gauge, which think goodness. Maybe if it wasn't um, garter stitch, maybe it would have been, if there is any change, it would have been a little bit notice, more noticeable on like a stitch pattern or stockinette stitch, but I don't think my gauge has changed at all with them. Granted, they are the same size, but um, I, I believe some people have said they knit looser, I think, with cute, with the square needles but I haven't noticed a gauge change and they're they're very nice I really really like them actually um, they seem they do kind of seem a little easier on the hands like I don't get my hands fingers don't get as tired as easy as quick so um, I'm thinking about seeing if they have I think they do at least I'm pretty sure they have them in um, on DPNs, but getting sock needles. See if they have them in the US ones, fixed circulars. Only if they're fixed circulars, I am almost 100% positive that they do have them for DPNs. 
But if they don't have them for fixed circulars, I think I won't I won't try out the DPNs because I don't do one sock at a time knitting. I'm strictly a two at a time uh, sock knitter because the second sock syndrome is very fierce with me. <laughs> um, there's no way I'd ever have a pair of matching socks <laughs> if I did one at a time socks. That is for sure. I have to have two at a time. But anyways, um, hopefully I'll, I'm going to check it out and see if I can find fixed some fixed circulars for magic loop knitting with the square needles and see if that lets me knit socks for a little bit longer in each setting. I'm housing this, and this is part of my stash enhancement, my Jane Austen knitting bag. You can find this on Knit Picks. As most of you, I'm pretty sure, are aware, uh, Knit Picks had their big summer sale finally since the last time that I recorded, and I was not going to partake because when, I, you know, as soon as I saw it and got the email, I got on there and, and I was like, ooh, okay, Billy Steve, yeah, so this, 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 and then I got to looking at my cart and then I went onto my Ravelry stash page and I realized that I had put some schemes I already had in my stash in my cart, and I'm like, oh, crap. Maybe that's a sign that I don't need any. So I held off and held off and held off until like the end of the week. <laughs> and I was like, I can't take it anymore. I can't I I've gotta I have to I have to participate. So I did buy some and um I needed just a little bit more to get free shipping, so I added this to my cart and I really love it. I really like this bag. And I am a huge Jane Austen fan. In fact I was just Watch. I just <laughs> over the week, last week, I came down with like a, a weird 24 hour bug fever, just fever. And so I uh, brought out all my Jane Austen DVDs and watched the 1995 Pride and Prejudice, the two was the Keira Knightley version, I think is 2005. So 2005. Kira Knightley version, which 1995 is by far the best version of Pride and Prejudice, in my opinion. Colin Firth is Darcy. There's no other Darcy but Colin Firth. But, anyways, um, <laughs> and I watched Pride and Prejudice, and then like this other Pride and Prejudice, which I don't remember what year that came out. It is in the 2000s, and it was a. Uh, kind of like a weird Mormon version. I've seen it before. I found it on YouTube. And uh, I was like, okay, well, I guess I'll watch this again. <laughs> I'm poor. Actually, I I didn't watch the, um, oh, what year was that one? Was it 70s or something? Masterpiece Theater, but I can't remember what year. <sighs> I have it. I just don't remember what year exactly, but I pretty much have seen every adaptation of Pride and Prejudice. <laughs> it's horrible. And then after I finished with all of the Pride and Prejudice, I went and watched Sense and Sensibility, the Emma Thompson version, and also the newest version, which that may, that might be 2005 actually, with um, what's his face who played the governor from Walking Dead. He he played Colonel Brandon. It's kind of weird going back because I hadn't watched that version of Sense and Sensibility since I had, since Walking Dead has come out and and um, Governor. <laughs> so it's kind of weird to see going back and watching because I had completely forgotten that he had played Colonel Brandon and um, I was like, wow, this is kind of weird. <laughs> It's like, you're the governor, you're so horrible. <laughs> but anyways, he's a great actor, I think, but... <laughs> Alright, enough about Jane Austen. <laughs> um, yeah, so I have more wits. I decided to work on 
one thing and cast on another thing because I was kind of afraid that there wouldn't be much content in this episode. And then last night after I was um, working on my sock yarn blanket to, you know, to bring in some more content for this episode, I realized actually I have plenty because I'm going to be spending a lot of time on stash announcement. So, oh well. <laughs> Because there was a really need, but I do have all these mini skeins and stuff that I really need to turn into squares from inside the ground like it. So I picked that back up. I don't remember exactly where it was that I left off, and I meant to go back to previous episodes to try to find where where it was the last square that I had shown. I'm thinking it might have been this one. But I'm not positive, so I've gotten quite a bit of work added to it since the last time I've shown it, though. Um, it's still not that big, especially compared to some others. <laughs> but um, I go, I work from this side to here, which um, is my right, or if it's facing me, from left to right. Um, like you would in writing. Hmm? So I've got quite a bit. So we'll just talk about the new row then, because I'm not sure if that was the last time I shown. But this was a mini skein from Angie. I don't remember what yarn this was. This is Malabrigo in the Eggplant Colorway. That's also from Angie. This was my dad's socks, Christmas socks that I just uh, knitted for him. This. I don't remember the yarn, but I'm pretty sure this is another mini skein from Angie. And this is the Cascade Heritage Prince that I just knitted for my mom, for her, for her Christmas socks. So yeah, that's it so far. And I am on row, that makes, this will be the fifth row. I'm not finished with the row yet. I have two more squares to add to finish out the fifth row. So it's it's moving along, still quite small. <laughs> I'm kind of ready to the point where it's it um I'm kinda I'm ready to the point where it covers my legs. And I have very long legs, so <laughs> it's gonna be a while before I'm to that point. <laughs> but anyways. I'm 5'9 and I'm all legs, pretty much. I have a short torso and very long legs. <laughs> but anyways, I really, really love it. Um, I, I've i thought about it, but I, you know, in the beginning I was like, well, I'm just going to do this and probably donate to charity. But then after I was thinking about it, I was like, you know what, no, I'm going to keep it. Because it reminds me of quilts. And I love quilts and I have my great-grandmother's quilts, which I wish I had brought out here to show, because I knew I was going to talk about this, but I just, I love it. One of her quilts is, um, I think they're called like friendship quilt or something. I don't know anything about quilting. I just know that I like them. And anyways, um, there's all these, these squares and they're embroidered with all these people's names on them and the date. And there, you know, there's, there's well relatives and then they're, just, you know, friends, family friends and stuff. I think it's just so interesting. I love looking at them and thinking about, you know, what kind of history that person had and everything. And I just really love that. And I'm really hoping to have that same kind of quality with this. And hopefully one of my kids will appreciate it and keep it forever like I do with my great grandmother's quilts. I'm really hoping for that. But that's why I really, really like it. And so, yeah, I'm keeping this thing. <laughs> when it eventually gets finished. <laughs> okay, anyways, the other whip that I'm working on, I decided to cast on another pair of socks. Um, it took me quite a while before I did. Uh, I think I cast these on well last week it was it's for um I decided to wait and do it for the uh 
July knit and chat. They have a sock knit along for every month, and this month it's July summer sock knit along. So you're it, you don't have to do a particular pattern. You could do a pattern that says summer to you, or use a colorway that says summer to you. And both of these pretty much say summer, <laughs> the pattern and the colorway. Um, I wasn't for sure yet if I was going to do a pattern, but at the last minute before, when I decided, I was just like, you know what, yeah, I'm going to do a pattern. I just kind of did a modified version of the, it's known as Feather and Fan Lace and um, also known as Old Shell, I think, Lace. And it's a modified version of that. I really like it. Lace, any kind of lace work on sock patterns says summer to me. And also the colorway is Beach Cocktails <laughs> once more. Anyways, I'm knitting these two at a time toe up. These socks are definitely for me. Um, it, I'm kind of surprised it took me that long to get before I cast these on because, of, you know, as soon as I get socks off the needles, I'm like, okay, I need to have another pair of socks on the needles, so I usually immediately cast on, but, oh well. Anyways, I really, really love how these are knitting up. The colors are kind of being blown out. They're not, it's kind of hard to see them, so sorry, you can see a lot of shadowing going on, um, but it's a nice, it's very bright pink and orange and yellow and then light pink. It's variegated, but it's I love how it's knitting up so far. It's just very, very pretty. I think. Anyways, um, these are knit on US 1, 2.25 millimeters, my chow do needles, two at a time, toe up. I do plan on doing the fish lips kiss heel. A lot of people, I posted these on the Addicted to Sock Knitting group on Facebook. And a lot of people were asking about the pattern. Um, I went on Ravelry to see if there, because I was just do, going. I was just, I was like, okay, well, it works for the my stitch count, so um, the pattern does the pattern repeat. And anyways, I went on Ravelry to see if that was on any sock pattern, and I couldn't find any, any like, like the modified version that I'm doing. So, um, I was like, oh, okay, well, and a lot of people were asking about it a lot. I was like, okay, well, once I finish these, I'll just post this as a free, free sock pattern. So that's something to look forward to. I'm just going to keep that out because it's pretty special. I need to drink. My mouth is so dry. Hmm. Excuse me. Hmm. Okay. Anyhow, that's it for for knitting. I was about to say spinning. Let's move on to the spinning, shall we? You can see my spinning wheel in the background. Um, Turdy Fleece is going on right now. I don't remember what the end date is, but it follows the Turdy Friend. Turdy Wow, I can't say that. Because <laughs> in my head I'm like, okay, this sounds very sad. Okay, you know what's going on. If you know what turn of fleece is, you know what's going on. Well, I thought about joining the rookie group, but I realized I really I don't have time to spin every day. And that's pretty much what it requires. There are there is a two day break. But even like you know, some people, well, you know, some people set their own challenge, like, okay, well, um, I'm going to spin every day, but it's going to be 15 minutes. I don't think I even really can do 15 minutes every day. It's, I don't think it's going to happen. And I already have this on my bobbin, so I'm not exactly sure if you can go ahead and include what is already on your bobbin. And um, I know that if I had just switched it out and started with a new fiber, that this one would never get finished because it's taken forever so far and it's continuing to go that route. Um, so I was like, you know what? Maybe next year. But this 
I don't know what the deal is. This is like the slowest going spinning I think I've ever have I've ever done. Um, and I think the reason for that is because I have found, I'm pretty sure I have found my happy place as far as spinning was concerned. And it's not necessarily weight or anything like that because I know some spinners talk about how well their happy place for, with spinning is spinning a bulky or worse their weight as opposed to lace fingering weight. I think my happy place is all about the colors and it's bright fun colors because I realized that when I have bright and fun colors on my bobbins it goes by faster it's more of a joy to spin and what I have what I'm spinning right now and I've been spinning for months <laughs> now it's the opposite of bright and cheery it's dark and drab and rainy and I love that for for yarn you know but for fiber for some reason it's just it's hard for me to break it out and spin it it's I don't know not that the colors aren't pretty and if this was with yarn I, I would you know um like if this is a skin of yarn I would love to knit it up knit a shawl out of it yeah that's my go-to but with spinning, it's, it's just the opposite, I think. So, I'm just really ready to get this this done, off the bobbin, plied, and, and move on to a nice, fun color. And I really, I'm pretty sure that from now on, I'm just going to gravitate towards the nice, happy, fun, cheerful, neon, bright, bright, cheery colors. So as far as fiber is concerned, fine fiber. But this is still when this um, is 100% Falkland, uh, dyed by Wendy's Wonders on Etsy. Um, and yeah, it's going. Uh, Falkland, it's not that soft if you never, if, if you um, haven't ever dealt with Falkland before, it's not soft. It is very easy to spin. It drafts a lot like BFL. BFL, I would say, is probably a little bit softer than Falkland. Um, but, yeah, it, I, I would say it, this isn't... I mean, if you... I don't know if I would say this is next to skin soft. I'm strictly very... It seems like it would really itch after... Very, very quick. So, anywho, um, I got this and and this left. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, not too much longer, and I will have it finished. Maybe my goal. I should be setting my goal to have this finished the next time I record. Completely finished. Let me show a, a new skein of hand spun. Finally, have an FO for spinning. <sighs> Anywho, yeah, maybe. Mm -hmm. I've also last night I ordered oil for my spinning wheel. Yeah, I texted my friend who is an experienced knitter, or not knitter, spinner. <laughs> um, if you are are a new viewer, I um. I received this spinning wheel as a gift for Christmas last year. It did not come in until mid-January. <laughs> it took like two months to ship, pretty much. <laughs> and anyways, <clears throat> so I'm a very new spinner. I started in January and of this year, and um, the oil did not come with the part, as part of the kit. Um, when I was doing research last night, I realized that some spinning wheels do come with like a little bit of a little maintenance kit and spinning wheel oil is included. Um, I think most Ashfords are, are, do that and maybe, yeah, I, actually I think that might be the only one that I saw on there. But anyways, um, mine did not. And I noticed that it has started squeaking a little and also 
the more I spin on it and each setting like towards the end, it gets to where it's got this a lot of drag on it and I don't know what is going on, whatever I do, like I'm not messing with tension or anything and then all of a sudden it just gets very hard and tedious to spin. And anyway, so I realized, you know what, maybe I need to oil this thing. So I, I looked up online, did some research on it, and yes, most definitely, I do need to oil my spinning wheel. So I ordered some last night, and hopefully it will get here soon. I ordered it on Etsy. That was the best price I could find, was through Etsy, um, for spinning wheel oil. I can't remember. I think it's Ashford. It's for Ashford, but it doesn't really matter. But I, I don't think. Um, anyways, yeah. So I might not like. I might not do any spinning until that comes in. Hopefully, it will ship very soon. I can get in real quick. So, anyways, if you are a very new spinner, or are thinking about getting a spinning wheel and your spinning wheel does not come with a maintenance kick, or, or kick, kit, or it comes with spinning wheel oil, go ahead and buy some, because apparently you need it. <laughs> um, it's recommended to um, use it on your wheel every eight hours of spinning. Um, I, I, th some, I think some people use it, like, just put some in right before right before they start spinning. I don't spin every day, so I really wouldn't, I mean, sometimes I only spin once a week, sometimes it's only once every two weeks, so I don't think I'd be, I don't know, hmm? I don't know how to keep track of eight hours of spinning. Hmm? Anywho. But yeah, so that's it for spinning. Stash enhancement. Well, I already showed you the bag. The other little thing that I bought from Knit Picks, in, oh, I don't remember, oh, they're Clover brand darning needles. They come in this little thing. And there's three different, or maybe, yeah, there's three needles that come in it, and one is sock lace. Yeah, it's always very, this is a twist, it's not small. It looks like a pop off. But, um, and they're slightly bent at the tips. I don't know if you can see that. Maybe if I point it up. Yeah. And I have been just using like those really crappy plastic ones that came with the kit from Michaels. And it's about to break in half because I bend it so much trying to weave in the ends on my socks. So I'm very glad, uh, and like I said, I needed to get a little bit more um, in my cart to get the free shipping, so I went ahead and put these in there, and I'm really glad I did, because <laughs> it's a lot easier to weave in the ends on socks <laughs> with these. Anyways, yeah, so if you haven't tried those, I highly recommend them. They're not that much. I think I paid less than $2 for them at Knit Picks. So if you're needing like a little, just a little, a couple more dollars to get that free shipping, check those out if you haven't. Okay, we'll just get on to the yarn. <laughs> um, first thing, I bought three different colorways in the Felici. First one is Eclipse, two balls each. I was thinking, I was gravitating more towards with the, the darker colorways and with black. That way I have some more socks in it for my mom for Christmas. Gosh, she wants black socks, but it's never going to happen. But at least there's going to be some black in the socks. The other one is dark side. Hmm, pretty. And then this one is my favorite, and I can't wait to get these on the needles, and they'll definitely be mine. They're not going to be gift knit 
socks for anyone. So they're mine. <laughs> little selfish knitter, you can see, but it's kaleidoscope. I think a lot of people purchase this colorway. It's it's just it's a fun color. So you got neon green and neon pink and then blue and purple. And I think there's yellow. Yellow. And then it's well, it's very close. Let's see. Well, maybe not. It's not their dev gray, but maybe a little lighter. It's definitely not white. And I wouldn't even say an off-white. Just a very, 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 very pale gray. I'd say. Yeah. So, can't wait to knit this up. I think it's going to be very, very cute. <laughs> and then the last two balls that I bought were the tweed. And this they're saying goodbye to this colorway and so I decided to snatch it up because the other colorways that I was hoping to get um, they did have they put like about half of their tweed base on sale for their colorways but none of them included the ones that I was hoping to get in the sale and I was thinking well there's the Thanksgiving sale so I'll just wait on those and hopefully they'll put them on sale. But anyways, but they were saying they're saying goodbye to this colorway. I'm not sure why. I think it's very pretty. And it's called Autumn Heather. And I cannot remember, but I think they were like two I think it was less than two dollars each per ball of this colorway. Because it was a goodbye and it was on sale too. It was I had a double sale. <laughs> going on. And so, yeah, $4, pretty much. Not bad. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why they're saying goodbye to it. I think it's very, I think it's very pretty. And I, like I said before, I really love their Stroll Tweed base. I'm not the biggest fan. Well, I really like their Stroll base. It is super soft. But it's very peely and I don't really like it for socks. Um, I think it's one thing for maybe shawls. I haven't used it for shawls, so I don't really know, but maybe for maybe for them, maybe for something that doesn't give a lot of friction, but it peels something awful. But their tweed one doesn't seem to peel as much, it's a little tighter. Of a twist, I think maybe I don't know. It just doesn't seem to really peel that much, and the peeling that it does do just, you know, blends to the whole tweeniness factor. And they're it's very manly. They have very manly colors for it, which I really really like. And I really like making socks for you know out of it for the men in my life. So these will be future socks for my husband, my dad, or my brother. So. One of the three. <laughs> and it was on sale for really cheap, so I couldn't help myself. I'm really hoping when they do their Thanksgiving sale that they put the other colorways I'm looking for on sale. But anyways, that's it for stash enhancement. And yes. Yeah. So that's it for knitting and spinning and stash enhancement. Uh, week in review. Well, this is a two-week podcast, so I guess I should say weeks in review. Um, if you are in the United States, uh, you will know that we just celebrated our Independence Day, 4th of July. This is last Monday. Uh, it's Thursday. I'm recording on Thursday today. And anyways, my parents, I talked about this in the last episode, my parents have put in a new pool. Well, I think last time I recorded they were in the process of putting in a new pool. Well, they got the pool in in time for 4th of July <laughs> celebration. So we went over there, from, you know, at my parents and did a little pool party. My kids loved it. I did not get in because I don't know what I did, but I, maybe it's because of the exercising that I've been doing or something. And I will say, well, actually, 
maybe it's a combination of exercises and sneezing. And the last last time I recorded, I was I didn't sneeze, but I felt the sneeze coming on, and I kept and it kept on like that for a couple of days. I wouldn't actually ever sneeze, but I kept feeling the sneeze come on. I know this is so weird, but anyways. It finally happened, and when it did, boy, did it hurt <laughs> my back. I think I pulled something in my back when I did that. <laughs> and so, 4th of July rolls around, and my parents are like, oh, you'll get in the pool, get in the pool, get in the pool with the kids. Yeah. You'll love it, you'll enjoy it. And I was like, yeah, I would, but my back was hurting so bad. I couldn't even enjoy the fireworks. Like I was, I was laying down on their couch and everything because I pulled something. I don't know, but I was popping ibuprofen like crazy. As you know, oh my, and my husband was rubbing my back. Well, the next day, it was hurt. It was starting to hurt again. It, it went away, and but it started hurting again to where like I couldn't move. So I got down on the floor and did some yoga, um, particularly the dog pose, sunrise pose, or whatever, cat pose, and just, and, you know, all the planking and stuff, just doing that over and over again, um, a little bit of the warrior pose, and if you are familiar with yoga or unfamiliar with yoga, they're probably, what, probably the most popular yoga poses, I don't know, I don't really do much yoga, it's hard on my knee, um, so I don't really do it that much, and those are the only ones I can remember to do, you know, uh, I don't, or have memorized, <laughs> so I just decided, I was like, you know what, okay, I'm going to do those and see if that helps, and it helped tremendously. It hurt like you wouldn't believe, <laughs> but after I did them, I was really glad because the next day, I hadn't had any problems. I haven't had any problems since, so I'm glad that I did the yoga because it really, really helped a lot more than the pain medicine, I think. But, anyways, so yeah, that was fun. <laughs> Back pain. Um, and I, and during that whole time, I didn't get on an elliptical to exercise either. My knee has also been very been hurting. A lot. Um, I just recently, I don't even remember, if, I don't think I bought it then, last time I recorded, but I purchased a knee brace for when I get on the elliptical, and that seems to help. Um, I still have a little problems with it, it still kind of hurts a little bit, but um, it seems to keep my knee a lot more steady, more balanced. Um, a couple of years ago, uh, they thought I had torn meniscus, uh, and my knee was swollen like crazy and everything. And so, ever since then, I have to be very careful with my knee because I have a lot of knee problems on just my right knee. So, it bugs me a little bit. I'm a little tickle. Um, what else? I think that's about it. I know, I'm boring. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, I did a BKN the, n not last Friday, but the Friday before, it was two weeks ago, which I think they only do it every other week. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, if you, um, are looking for a new podcast, there's the Uncreative Crafter, uh, hosted by Storm Coast. Her and some other podcasters do BKN, I think, like, all week long. I'm not exactly sure. But her night to host um, is on Fridays. So check out her podcast. Um, I think Andrea and the Cat Lady also co-host that night. I think they co-host that BKN together. I'm not sure. On Friday nights. But I think they're going to have one tomorrow tomorrow night, so I'll probably do it again. It's the first time I've ever done a BKN, so of course I'm like sitting here. I didn't even talk for the longest time because I'm just trying to figure out the controls because they're not labeled 
they just have the symbols for them. And so, of course, it's the first time I've ever done anything like that. I've never done FaceTime or Skype or anything like that. So, I was like, what are those for? And anyways. <laughs> anyways. <laughs> so, that was interesting. It was fun. Mm -hmm. I'll probably do it again tomorrow night. Uh, Friday night is pretty much the only time I'm going to be able to do to do something like that. Because I have kids, and we also get up very early to get them to school, and blah. It's not like an old fart, but yeah. Hmm. Anyways, that's it for Weekend Reviews. What am I watching? Well, we finished Vikings, and I had heard that they were going to extend the season and bring it back this summer, but I haven't heard anything else about it. Um, so I'm not really sure that that's true. <laughs> But we finished Vikings. It was an interesting season. Um, if you haven't watched it yet, I'm sorry. Stop watching this now because I'm about to spoil a bunch of stuff. If you have seen it, then you know what I'm talking about. Um, definitely interesting. Uh, I was a bit disappointed with the final battle between Rollo and Ragnar. With a little, when they finally got to fight each other and it was like all slow mo, but still with the slow mo, they pretty much got like three moves in and, and then all of a sudden, that's it, it was the end of the battle, the fight between them because they, because they, um, like Lagatha got injured and Ragnar was like, get her on the boat, and his son Bjorn was like, get on the boat, but they ended up, some other guys, dragged him off and got him on the boat with them as well and took him away from ending the fight with Rolo. So once again, it ended and they were separated and I guess they're going to have to do it all over again. I don't know. It was just kind of, I don't know. When we, after we watched it, I was just thinking, that's kind of a cop out. That's really, that's really, that's a cop, that's a cop out. Really, producers, writers. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> I just thought it was kind of lame. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anyways, Game of Thrones finished. Um, like I said, on Vikings, we had had it recorded. And we were just waiting to watch it after every episode aired. It's like Game of Thrones. It's a very short season. I can't remember how many episodes there are to Vikings. I think maybe 10 to 13, something like that. It's somewhere in that range. And anyways, if you're a Game of Thrones fan, you know that they don't have very many episodes per season as well. So we waited for the whole season to be done and uh, go back to the recordings and just binge watch it. We are to episode 7 or 8. Um, and yeah, um, at first I was kind of thinking, um, it's back to being boring again. Because, <laughs> come on, let's face it, Game of Thrones can be a little boring, especially, what's her face, Daenerys, especially her storyline. It's like, oh, she, it's the same thing over and over again every season for her storyline. If they would if they would just do something different, which, from the spoilers I've heard, apparently they do, maybe, I don't know, like, but I haven't gotten to that point yet, so I don't know. <laughs> But it's just, it's like, oh, okay, so she meets more slave masters, owners. She kills the masters, frees the slaves, they worship her. Yay. Okay, let's walk, like, another hundred miles. Oh, there's more masters, there's more slaves. Let's kill the masters, let's free the slaves. They worship her. Yay. <laughs> we'll put her, we'll plop her dragons in there every once in a while to try to, like, keep it interesting and distracting. They distract you by dragons. Like, oh, dragons, they're bigger this season. Yay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is our story. Like, it's kind of, it's repetitive and boring. But anyways, but now it's, it's getting, it's getting better, I think. Um, like I said, we're only seven, I think, I'm not sure, I think we're about to, I think we're, we finished with episode six and about to start seven. I'm not sure, I can't remember. The Hound is back. 
that's the last episode we watched. Mm -hmm. they, they brought the hound back. Which that was awesome to see because I really liked him. And um, Owens oh, and, and Sansa and John reunite. And that's something I was really, really happy about because I was saying it's about time that the good guys get a little bit of happiness for once, you know, and just and to finally see some starts be brought back together. So I was all, you know, when they hug and everything, I was all super excited because I was like, oh, finally, <laughs> you know, some of the starts get back together, yay. <laughs> you know? Anyways, um, but yeah, other than that, that's really all there is to say about Game of Thrones <laughs> so far. <laughs> Anywho, but yeah, that's all I'm watching. And like I said earlier in the episode, I've got on a Jane Austen kick and watched quite a bit of Jane Austen, <laughs> mostly Pride and Prejudice. <laughs> um, I went back to our. DVD room had tons of DVDs and I kept trying to find I'm missing some I don't know where they are but I have Persuasion too and anyways on YouTube I had seen that there was a 90's um, version of Persuasion which I haven't seen I've only seen the latest one which is 2000, early 2000's um, BBC but um, anyways, so now I'm on the hunt to get the 90s version to add to my collection of Jane Austen DVD so I can watch it. Uh, anyways, um, but yeah. And then I'm probably going to watch North and South. I guess I'm just on that whole, whore, oh, and Jane Eyre. Let's, don't even get me started on Jane Eyre. I've seen every adaptation of Jane Eyre as well when I have them. And I watch them. So I might as well just continue with that and just watch, just finish watching all the, those movies. <laughs> My husband was all the time like, why do you need to see this story again, just done with different actors? Like, I don't care. I will, I have seen every one of them and I will continue to see everyone. And, you know, a new one pops up, I will watch it. <laughs> And I will probably own it, and I will probably watch him more than once. <laughs> I don't know why. I just love him, and I'm gonna watch him. <laughs> and the only one I don't particularly care for is Wuthering Heights. <laughs> and the even though, well, it wasn't the latest one. They have another one that just came out recently. With pretty young actors, if I remember right. But the one with Tom Hardy in it. And even though Tom Hardy's in it and I liked and I like him, he's he's a pretty good actor. And I don't have hots for him like a lot of women do, but that's because he's short. But <laughs> anyway. Um even though he does a really good job in, in that, I still don't like I just I, my one of my really good friends, she loves Wuthering Heights. When we were in high school, she used to make me watch the, um, the 90s version with, uh, what's her name? Julia Binoche and, um, Voldemort dude. What is his name? <laughs> uh, Ralph Fiennes. Um, and, and I was just like, yeah, I don't really like that. I just, I, I it's the story. I don't like it. Is it well written? Is, is some of the dialogue, you know, some of the best there was and is? Yeah, I mean, there's some really excellent lines in that story, but I cannot stand the character, so I don't like what I'm like. That's my one exception. I cannot stand, I, can't, I, I wouldn't say I can't stand it, because I do watch you know, when there's a new one out, I'll watch it, a new adaptation, but it's not my favorite. <laughs> it's just none of the characters. They're just not likable. They're terrible characters. Anyway, it's cool. Anywho. Hmm? Oh, yeah, and Rick was in that one with Tom Hardy. 
Rick from Walking Dead. What's his name? Andrew Lincoln. Amy! <laughs> Not for that. <laughs> or is it? No, it's not Andrew Lincoln. What is his name? Andrew Lincoln? No. The guy that plays Rick. <laughs> Whatever his name is. Anywho, I'm gonna stop. I'm babbling. Anyways, thank you for watching another episode of this terrible, terrible podcast. Um. <laughs> uh oh, it, pod, uh, podcast news. I'm sorry. Uh, if you go on the TV Knits group on Ravelry, you will see that the stash bust is continuing. Um, I just drew for two winners from the second quarter, um, which ended uh, at the end of June. And so now we are in the third quarter for the 2016 stash bust knit along. Um, well, really, it's a craft along because you can include knitting, crochet, weaving, spinning. Whatever it is, as long as you use stashed materials. <laughs> Anywho. So, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. We just started the third quarter. And the third quarter will end at the end of September. And we'll do a drawing for that. And then it will be in the fourth quarter. Wow. So, already half a year has gone by. That's crazy. I'm ready for summer to go away. <laughs> But anyways, I live in Arkansas. It's hot. It's humid. It sucks. <laughs> um, anyways, and we got a brand new knit long going on, and that is for the Rainy Night Shawl, uh, designed by Gabrielle Knits. I'm not going to say her real last name because I will butcher it and just it'll be awful. <laughs> but um, she, you can find her on Instagram as Gabrielle Knits. Um, she designed a shawl in our Red Umbrella Yarns Shop to Mars base, which is our 100% superwash merino fingering weight out of our Storm Clouds colorway. It's very, very pretty. It's a top-down triangular shawl. Um, the knit along has started. There was a 20% off uh, launch sale for it. And I also put all of our semi solid colorways on sale as well. I think I probably need to address this in the threads for that knit along as well because I don't think it was very clear. But you do you can join the knit along. You do not have to use my yarn. You can use whatever yarn you want. So I don't think it was clear on that. But um. But if you do use our, my yarn, then you can enter your FO twice in the FO thread, and that gives you more chance to win the prize. Um, I believe Gabrielle said that she was going to donate some patterns for, for this in a long or coupon codes or something. Um, but so far, I'm going to be donating a skein of, our, of my yarn. Of Red Bella Yarns for the price for that knit along. So check it out. Check out the knit along. Check out the shawl pattern. It's very, very pretty. I have not started it yet. <laughs> I'm going to. I'm still trying to decide on a colorway. I have a lot of dye orders to catch up on. Um, so while I'm doing that, I think I'll, I think while I dye up all those dye orders, I think I will finally make my decision on what color way to do and and go with that and, and cast it on. I'm not sure if I have the needle size that is called for in the pattern, but I was looking, and I can't remember, I think it might be two and a half, I think it might be the recommended needle size, but it is an adaptable pattern. And I believe I was I saw different needle size used for the testing, for the test knits for it. And I think I saw one where they used US 6, which is 4.0 millimeter. I think I might, I have a, I have a side pair of US 5 freed up. So I might, I think I might do it in that, on that. So knit it with that instead of the two and a half, because I don't think I have that. I don't think I have that size. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so that's it. 
uh, check out that new long. Like I said, it's the Rainy Night Shawl new long. You can find it in our group, Team Nerd Knits, on Ravelry. Um, if you are watching this on YouTube, I provide a link to the group on the show notes in the description box for this episode. So, anyways, that will take you directly to the group. So, check it out. Um, have a great week, two weeks, really. Um, stay cool if you are going through a hot ass summer like me. I hate it. I said it more than once. I hate summer. <laughs> And let's hope and hope and hope that we get a winter. We did not get a winter yet this year, and I'm really hoping we get one this year. Or wait, I just said, wow, that did not make any sense. Anyways, I'm babbling. I'm going to let you go. Bye. <laughs>